Query folding is a process where the steps of data transformation applied in Power Query Editor are translated into native query language that are then executed directly in the data source. In simple terms, it means that instead of importing all your data into Power BI and then performing transformations, Power Query pushes those transformation steps back to the data source whenever possible. So today, we're going to see a few examples where query folding get activated and how you can use it to increase the performance of your Power BI reports. Let's go. Now you might wonder why query folding is important. Well, query folding can significantly improve performance and reduce memory consumption. By executing transformations at the source, only the final results needs to be brought into Power BI, leading to faster refresh times and more efficient use of resources. Now there are two main requirements for query folding to happen. First one is compatible data source, which means query folding is dependent on the capability of the data source itself. The data source must support the operation and transformation being applied, and it must have the necessary functionalities to process the query sent by Power BI. Second one is Power Query native functions. Now Power BI uses its own set of native functions within Power Query for data transformation. To enable query folding, Power BI must be able to translate these native functions into equivalent operations or queries that the data source can understand and execute. Now let's understand these requirements with an example. We're using a data set which contains crime records from USA with little over 900,000 rows. I have stored this data inside a local instance of PostgreSQL, which is a relational database management system. And we will connect Power BI directly to this database and see query folding in action. Now, before moving further, let me just quickly show you the data itself. Now, if you see, it contains a couple of date columns uh, the area where the crime happened, age group of the victim and their gender and couple of other information. Okay. So we're going to use this data and then import this into Power BI. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this Power BI desktop and I'm going to click on get data. And within get data, I'm going to just write PostgreSQL and select this PostgreSQL database. Okay. Connect. Now, while connecting, it's going to ask you for some credentials because this is a local instance of the database. I'm going to just write localhost and the database name is Postgre and data connectivity mode. You have two options here, import and direct query. Okay. Now, if you choose import, then that means whatever operation you apply, it will store the final output in the Power Query engine itself. Okay. On the other hand, the direct query allows you to connect directly to a data source and query the data in real time. This will not import the data into Power BI's internal data model. So as far as my understanding goes, in this approach, Query Engine will not let you conduct any operation which is not possible to query fold. Let me know in the comment section if you think otherwise, I'll be happy to learn something new. So for now, I'm going to choose this import option because this will let me run any operation that I want without any restrictions. So I'm going to say import and OK. Now, if you see the table that we are referring to is this public dot crime data. I'm going to select this and instead of loading, I'm just going to click on transform data. Now in the Power Query editor, let's apply a few transformation steps. Now, remember, as per the requirement, functions or operation that we apply Power Query should be able to translate those to PostgreSQL native function or else the folding will not happen. Okay. So the first transformation step that I'm going to apply is simply to apply a filter on the area name. So let's say I'm going to say, give me everything except 77th Street and Central. Okay. So I'm going to press OK. So the first transformation step has been applied. Second one, replace null values with zeros for all these crime directory columns. So CRM CD1, CRM CD2, CRM CD3, and CRM CD4. And I'm going to say replace values, null, and replace it with 
zero. Press OK. So the second transformation step has also been applied. Now I'm going to create a new column. Go to add column, create custom column. I'm going to call this age group. And in this, I'm going to simply say if victim age is less than 18, then child else give me adult. Press OK. Finally, I'm going to add one more custom column. And this column would be simply a reverse of the name of the area that the crime happened. So I'm going to use this area name column and then apply text.reverse function. Select this area name and that's it. Okay. So what this column does is simply takes your area name column here and then reverses the text inside the area name. Now this particular transformation step does not actually have a relevance in the actual data, but I deliberately applied this step to show you how query folding works and how you know that query folding is not working. Okay. So to check if your query folding is being applied on all these steps, the simplest method is to simply click on the step that you applied, right click on it, and you'll see this option which says view native query. So if this particular option is enabled, then that means query folding is happening. If I click on this option, it will show you the actual SQL query, which Power Query has translated and then pushed towards PostgreSQL. Okay. So if you see it has selected, applied a select statement, and then within this, it has also applied a where clause. And if you see it is, it has excluded the 77th street and central from here. Okay. Let's move on to the second step, which is replace value. Again, if I check the view native query option is enabled. And if I click on it, if you see the earlier SQL query has been extended further and it has now been converted into a sub query and the outer query says case statement CRM CD one is null then zero CRM CD two is null then zero and so on and so forth. Okay. Third step where we added a victim age group. Again, it has created that section here and added a case statement and given us this SQL query. Okay. Now let's move on to the last step. Now text.reverse, as per my understanding, there is no function within PostgreSQL which does this. Please correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. But I assume that because the equivalent function is not there in PostgreSQL, this particular step is not folded. So one thing to check here is obviously right click and see this option is disabled. But at times it happens that even if the view native query option is disabled, that does not guarantee that query folding is not happening. So this is one indication, but in order for you to confirm, there are two options. First one is to run a SQL profiler. So I know that Microsoft SQL server has a profiler, but uh, PostgreSQL, I think you might have to go to log and check whether the query is there or not. So what happens is when you fire the query from Power Query or refresh your query, it pushes the SQL query towards the database system and the profiler will capture that query. And then you can just check if the query exists in your profiler or not. Okay. The second option is to go to an inbuilt tool within Power BI, within tools, which is diagnostics. Now within this, you have two options. Either you can run the diagnostic on the entire applied steps section, or you can run diagnostic on selected steps. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it on the entire step so that we can see what's happening. I'm going to click on start diagnostic, go to home, refresh, come back and then click on stop diagnostic. Okay. The moment you do that, it creates a diagnostic section here. And within this, 
click on this diagnostic aggregated one. You will find a column called data source kind. I'm going to select this and I'm going to just deselect nulls because I am only interested in seeing PostgreSQL. And then let's scroll a little bit further. Now, if you see in the data source query column, it has shown me the steps or the queries that it has applied on your data. Okay. So I'm going to just scroll down. This is my first query. If you see, it says select statement and then it's applying the filter for 77th street and central. Okay. I'm going to move further down. This is where it's applying the case statement. So we know that folding is happening here, but even if you move further, you will not find any query, which is actually catering to that last transformation step that we did, which was text dot reverse. So which means this particular step is not been folded. So now how do we use query folding to optimize your reports? The simplest answer is to ensure that all operations that are getting folded should be done at the beginning. The reason for that is when a non-compatible operation is conducted, the query folding gets disabled and then every transformation step conducted after that step will not be folded unless you specifically enable it using value.native query. But it's better to avoid such unnecessary complication and order our steps in a efficient manner so that everything runs smoothly. So we know for sure that the last step is not getting folded. So I'm going to do is I'm going to move this little bit up and before moving, let me just show you this is getting folded because I can see this view native query. So I'm going to just move this little bit up and now this one anyways is not getting folded. But if I check this added custom, this is also getting disabled. Okay. So this might be an indication that the last query is not getting folded. Okay. Again, you would have to check it in the profiler, but the best practice would be to move this step, which is the one which is non-compatible, move it towards the end. So this was a small video about query folding. Let me know in the comment section if you think this was helpful. And in case you want to see something else regarding query folding, do let me know. I'll be happy to cover that topic. In case you're liking my content, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you don't miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.